Hey guys, Brendo New Productions here, and welcome to my 12th tutorial on editing with Vim. I'm pretty sure that this is going to be one of the final tutorials, however I'm also pretty sure that I've been saying that for the past 3 or 4 tutorials. So just ignore that last sentence. Um, in the past few tutorials, I've discussed how to, how to kind of make Vim your own. So um, two tutorials ago, we talked about how to use Vim to keep your coding syntax, and in the last tutorial, we talked about how to customize Vim. So this is all kind of personalization-y. So in this tutorial, I'm going to discuss how to actually customize Vim permanently. If, if you followed the last tutorial at all, you'll know that all of the set commands we learned, as long as you're typing them into an instance of Vim, uh, then they don't save. So when you're opening up Vim a second time, you'll have the problem of having to call all of those set commands again. And luckily, the creators of Vim thought of this. So they created a file called the VimRC file. And this vimrc file allows you to customize vim by just entering those colon commands into a file and then saving the file. And then next time you open vim, everything will be saved. So the vimrc file is located uh, wherever your vim is installed if you're running Windows. If you're running Linux, it's located in your home directory and it is a hidden file. And if you're running Mac OS X, I'm not entirely sure where it is located. My apologies on that note. So let's go ahead and get started with editing our vimrc file. Now for whatever reason, editing your vimrc file does not really work on Windows when you're running gvim. Uh, there's some sort of read-only error. And I don't really want to go in the tutorial discussing how to unread-only files. So I'm going to go ahead and simply launch an instance of vim. Great, so now that we have our instance of vim opened, um, keep in mind this is the vim running, running from the terminal, not the gvim. Uh, there is a little bit of a difference, however, they definitely act the same. Now that we're at running Vim, we can go ahead and open up the, v the VimRC file. There's two ways to do this. You can go ahead and actually navigate to your VimRC file and then edit it, or you can use a macro that's actually stored by Vim, and it's called myVimRC. So using the colon E command, the one that we learned in the first or second tutorial, I'm not entirely sure, we can type in colon E dollar sign myVimRC. And as you can see, it automatically loads the vimrc file for vim. Um, I'm just going to make this window a little bigger. Okay, I don't think that vim allows us to do that. That's okay, we'll work with tiny vim. <laughs> so, as you can see, um, there's a bunch of code here, and it doesn't matter if you don't know what it means, because it all applies to things that you're not really going to be touching. For example, the set no compatible, that's to reduce the compatibility issues between vim and Vi, so it, it separates the Vims from the Vi's. Um, and then the next three lines, make sure that Vim is customized to work with Windows, MS Win you'll probably see. And this large uh, function here is defined to work with Vim Diff, which we haven't even covered yet, so you don't even need to worry about that. In general, if you ever open up your VimRC without editing it beforehand, and you see that there's contents in it, leave those contents there. They're probably necessary. So we're just gonna go ahead and go to the bottom of our VimRC, and open a new line using the O command. And then we can go ahead and start customizing our Vim. Now I'm just gonna start with one command, and this is a command that we covered in the last tutorial, and that is the line numbering command. So if we go ahead and type in set NU for numbering, um, you'll notice that, uh, well, you won't really notice anything. <laughs> So if we type in set NU, that actually turns line numbering on. Now one thing you'll probably notice is that the colon is missing, and that's because the only reason we typed in the colon beforehand was to let Vim know that we were entering a command, because in command mode you type in colons to enter Vim-specific commands. So typing in this set new at the bottom of this file here actually uh, lets Vim know that you want line numbering turned on. And then you can go ahead and apply these changes by simply saving the file. And then if we go ahead and edit a different file, so I'm just gonna edit text.txt. Actually, no. Okay, apparently not. So, I've just learned that the vimrc changes are not applied until you restart vim. So, vim loads the vimrc changes upon startup, and I'm sure there's a way to actually force it to load the vimrc uh, files, like some sort of refresh command. However, I'm just gonna go ahead and restart vim for now. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of it, and then I'm going to relaunch Vim. And as you can see, in our new document here, we actually have the number one. And then if we go ahead and um, edit the myVimRC file, you can see that the lines are now numbered. And this is because we have the setNU command 
um, inside of our Vim. So let's go ahead and alter some other commands. So let's just go ahead and enter some of the commands that were covered in the last tutorial. So a few things that you may want to set in all of your Vim files. Um, you can also, by the way, type in comments with the quotation mark. So we're just going to type in additional changes. And then you can go ahead and type in a quick summary for everything. Line numbering. Oops, I'll put a space after this. Line numbering. And you can go ahead and do this to keep your VimRC file organized. So we can just go ahead and set a few other things like auto indenting, uh, no error bells. And you can see that the commands are actually syntax highlighted because there's a syntax uh, setting for your VimRC, which is great. We're also going to go ahead and set color column equal to 80. Um, we're going to go ahead and set tab stop stop equal to 2. We're going to go ahead and set background equal dark. And we're going to set colors. Or no, we're not going to set colors. We're just going to type colors equals equals elf lord uh, change the color scheme a little bit and i'm not sure if you actually need to set colors or not i don't think you need to in fact i don't even think you need an equal sign i think you just need to say colors space and then the theme we'll see more on this in just a second we're also going to set ruler um, which was the little helper down at the bottom, and that's probably enabled by default. However, I'm going to include it just for redundancy's purposes. And, oh, of course, we need to set no HL search. And I think that this may be all of the things that we covered in the last tutorial. I'm not entirely sure. Um, but this is definitely something that's going to make our Vim a lot more powerful. So if you haven't seen the last tutorial, be sure to do that because it explains what all of these commands do. Uh, so we pretty much just took all of the commands and put them into the VimRC file. So now that we have all of these additional changes made, we can go ahead and save it using the colon W and quit at the same time using the Q. And then once we do that, we can open a new instance of Vim and um, then we can go ahead and test it out. So as you can see, we have the black background from our Elf Lord theme, and we can go ahead and type hello world, and then we'll type in tab a few times, and you can see that tab is only two spaces. Uh, so let's go ahead and type in a quick Java file. I'm going to call it tester test, tester tester actually, apparently, um, and then we're going to public static void main string args system dot out dot print line. World. And we actually don't have a color column showing up here, and I think that's because this window is not big enough. Yes, so the color column is actually there, but the window is not big enough. As you can see in our ruler down at the bottom, that this actually goes to column 74, and our color column is set to 80. So we can't really see that being applied, but that's okay. So now we have this quick Java file. I'm going to go ahead and save it to my desktop, see users, Brandon. Oops, Brandon desktop and it's called tester tester.java and as soon as we do that you can see that um, the syntax highlighting was was supplied to us and I believe that this is elf lord not entirely sure um, looks pretty similar to what it did before we set the theme however we don't always just need the theme to confirm um, you can see that all of our other all of the other things that we edited into our VimRC are also showing up, except color column. So we're going to go ahead and edit uh, my VimRC and change the value of color column from 80 to 60, so we'll actually be able to see it. And are there any other commands that we can we can set while we're in the VimRC file? We could probably change the background from dark to light, um, just to show that these changes. I actually don't know what this will do, so let's go ahead and test it out. So we're going to save these changes, and then we're going to reopen Vim. And once we do, um, it doesn't actually look like the background color changed. However, this may actually affect the theming. Um, so this was tester desktop, tester, tester.java. And it doesn't look like it affected much. Um, so set background equal to light didn't really do anything. But that is okay, because now we can see our color column. So as you can see, um, editing the VimRC file, you definitely need to know what you're doing. You definitely need to know what the commands are. And there is online documentation for this. 
And on top of that, if you're really into customizing Vim to make it the way you want, you can do cool things like remap keys uh, or things like that. You can also make it so when you're programming in different languages, the tab stops are different lengths, or the syntax highlighting is different for different languages. Or say you want the theme to be different when you code in C or Java. You can go ahead and do that all in your VimRC file. And maybe I'll, come, I'll cover more advanced editing of your VimRC file in later tutorials. However, for now, I just wanted to make you aware of the VimRC file. If you'd like to check up and follow the VimRC file that I use, um, I don't know why you would want that, <laughs> but if you do, um, there's actually a link in the description to, for that. In these tutorials, I have not been using my VimRC file. Um, so there's that. And in future Java tutorials, future C tutorials, I will probably be using Vim, which is why I've made this tutorial series. So you can go ahead and be on the lookout for that. And now that you've almost finished this Vim series, you will be a master. So once again, this is how to edit your VimRC file to make all of your, your settings permanent. I definitely recommend backing up your VimRC file because um, if you're ever on somebody else's computer and you get so used to using Vim, you can just download Vim, download VimRC, your VimRC file, and then you can just load your changes into Vim and you'll be working just like you've been working at home. Thanks for watching. Please remember to rate, comment, and subscribe to this channel and rate and comment on the video. And I hope to see you in future tutorials. All right, get Vimming. Peace.